Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in survey research and design uh, which is about ANOVA and qualitative analysis and what we'll do in particular is look at one-way repeated measures ANOVA, mixed design ANOVA and ANCOVA and then we'll have a look at how to do a simple qualitative analysis and in particular how to use multiple response analysis. So let's have a look at uh, the ANOVA information. We'll go over the general steps involved, uh, have a look at an exercise which helps you to understand how the um, variance is partitioned between groups and within groups, uh, how to get your descriptive statistics into an APA style table. Then we'll look at the three different types of ANOVA uh, and we'll comment on effect size. The general steps uh, involve first of all in steps one and two identifying the design of the ANOVA and in particular what your independent variables are and your dependent variables and if you're going to do an ANCOVA, what the covariates uh, are. To start with, you, you need a single dependent variable which is continuous or at least interval or ratio uh, data. Uh, and if you have multiple dependent variables, you'll need to do multiple ANOVAs or if they're related to one another, roll them together into a MANOVA. For the independent variables, you'll need at least one categorical independent variable, but you may have two or more. And for a covariate, your covariate should be have similar levels of level of measurement as you would have for an MLR, and that is dichotomous or at least interval. That means you may need to do some recoding for your independent variables or your covariates. Uh, it's also a good idea to have either a research question or uh, one or more hypotheses around each of the effects in your analysis. For the testing of assumptions in ANOVA, there are four to consider. First of all, normality of the dependent variables distribution. And note that this should be checked uh, for each cell or for each group or measure uh, and not just for the overall distribution. Secondly, homogeneity of variance. This means that the variance uh, between the cells should be similar. The sample size, ideally we have at least 20 cases per cell. And finally, independent, of independent observations means that each score should be sampled without dependency on other scores, which is usually guaranteed by the design of the study, by having people uh, complete in standard conditions and um, independent from one another. So we can test most of those assumptions by getting descriptive statistics and histograms for each cell and for uh, descriptive statistics for the marginal uh, totals. We can also create an bar, error bar or line graph to visualise the means for the different uh, measures or groups. We would then interpret the significance test for each of the effects and if needed we would conduct follow-up tests which are either planned contrasts or post hoc tests. We should accompany our reporting of significance results with estimates of effect size. There are two types uh, the overall type is eta squared, which is equivalent to an R squared. SPSS will give you a partial eta squared for each effect. And you may also wish to report Cohen's D, which is for the difference between two means. So where you have follow-up tests uh, of pairwise differences, then you can also report Cohen's D.